I was going to start. Hello. No, I'm gonna... <laughs> That's right, David. It's time for Movie Trailer Trash. Enjoy. Hi, everybody. This is Movie Trailer Trash. I'm Bethany. I'm Charlie. And we just watched the short film, Edith. Edith. So um, this I is... I said that like it was like, going to be like an action movie. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's not. Edith. Edith. Um, no. Okay. So this is a very special episode. We're excited to bring you. Um, oddly enough, we're not talking about a trailer this time on Movie Trailer Trash. That is correct. So get ready, folks. This Strap will be, in. This will be different. <laughs> um, but before we get started, I just really want to tell you guys about Patreon. She's for, been itching. <laughs> for those of you who don't know yet, um, we're on Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a place where creatives can go to get support for their projects. And um, I'd love you guys to check us out. Go to movie or go to Patreon and then type in movie trailer trash. Yeah. And um, you can see, you know, there's different uh, things that you can get. You can get special episodes there and um, different perks if you choose to support us there. And if not, um, that's cool. Just keep listening to us, please, and share us with your friends. Gotta love bonus content. Yeah, we're real excited about it. It's going to be a fun little journey for us. So, all right, well, let's start this special episode. So this special episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done with the word special now. Specially, it's especially special for these Stop special it. reasons. <laughs> um, we were sent a short film called Edith from Mini Productions, um, and it's like 15 minutes long. It's currently in the festival circuit, so mm -hmm. you can't really see it right now, but uh, next year it's going to become more widely available. Yes. Um, and I don't know about you, but m for me, like I haven't seen a lot of short films, and when I hear the, word short, the words short film, I get kind of like nervous that it's going to be very artsy uh -huh. and self-serving and or just really weird but i will or say like done by an art student yeah I think like, like someone in college. i think of like somebody in college or i think of pixar that's it that's <laughs> honestly the only short films i've really ever watched are pixar and i mean i'm a fan of those yeah, well absolutely or but animated shorts you know we watched this one and we watched it twice and i was really pleasantly surprised by how just like really quality and good it was well, and, you know, at the very beginning, the, when we first watched it, I was really worried, like, how are they going to tell a whole story in just 15 minutes? Right. And that's like, especially kind of early on, because it's a quiet film and there's not a lot of dialogue. And I was like, uh oh, like, they're not going <laughs> to I was like, they're not going to finish. I was like, <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, uh -oh, they, just run out of they time. need more time. Just black screen. Just ends. <laughs> um, but no, I think that's what was really interesting about it, is they were able to tell this story in 15 minutes in a really unique way, I think. But yeah, this story is um, this guy in the UK uh, loses his wife and is dealing with it just like in kind of a really like d like really unfortunate, heavy, but really real kind of way. Yeah, that's so, a good way to describe it. So like, you know, he's going around and he's, he's obviously very depressed. He's having a really hard time with it. His wife not necessarily just died, but it's been like almost a year, I think. They say eight, eight months. Yeah, eight or nine months. And so it's like almost a year. And so you can understand him just kind of like not being all there and everything. Yeah, almost like he's numb. Like he hasn't quite moved on, but, you know, he's not really sure how to move on, I think is the thing. But it's also weird because this guy is very clearly like old school man kind of thing going on so like there's you know parts early on where that woman buys him a drink and he doesn't accept it he's like i don't let women buy me he's drinks. like yeah i don't take you gotta put that on women. my tab yeah exactly and then she calls him an old dinosaur uh -huh. love that <laughs> um and there's a few other things that are kind of like that where well, you he's know. quiet he's he doesn't talk a lot so he's kind of old school in that way too where you know he's he's more uh he thinks more internally and then you know only speaks when he feels it's necessary which i really like well, yeah, I think those characters character are interesting just in general. Really good. Yeah, and I mean, I think the actors did a really good job. But yeah, I mean, just the way that they kind of realistically show this, like, terrible depression of a strong person yeah. is interesting and really well done also. Well, and also, it only really, I mean, it only takes place over two days, which is interesting. So it's just like... A glimpse well, and into, a few flashbacks well, and stuff. Well, yeah, also. but it's mo but I'm just saying it's mostly like in present time in the non-flashback scenes. Um, it's just like a day and then morning, right? 
And it's kind of cool because, yeah, you're just getting a tiny glimpse into the, his present world, you right. know? And, and like, a big part of the stuff that actually happens in the short, so, like, uh, this woman who, like, you know, is obviously his friend who meets trying him in the bar. Maybe who's cheer like, him up a yeah, little. Yeah, trying to help him out, like, clean up his house a little bit because he's all messy all over the place. And have a few drinks with him. She's just trying to be nice, I think. That stuff in the contents context of this short film doesn't really matter to the what's what the story no that's being told. i mean all that's doing is letting us know how numb he is because he's just okay. kind of out of it while this nice woman's trying to help him really the story unfolds in his memories which is kind of cool in the flashbacks right and also um that's what's kind of neat about this is especially like when i watched it the first time through is i was like oh it's kind of a mystery yeah, yeah a little bit yeah which i also was like we only got 15 minutes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was very That's nervous me, the entire man. time. But no, um, she was sweating. It's not, you know, because it's only 15 minutes, the mystery is kind of constantly unfolding. You're constantly kind of peeling back layers to what's happened. Um, and I really like that Yeah. about it. And it's kind of neat the way they mix uh, his thoughts and his memories with present time, you know, and mm -hmm. I don't know, it's kind of neat. So um, apparently this uh, short was shortlisted. Ah short short listed nice. for a BAFTA award made the final 10 I think it was um and there was a, like the people in this movie or in this short are you know a real, legitimate actors yeah legitimate actors which I mean I guess that's rude all actors are legitimate well yeah they're not but college students like we were yeah, saying earlier that they've you, been in some real big films that you tend to accompany your you know in your brain with short films yeah these aren't like no names these are people who have been in other things and it's kind of awesome and it's like what we were talking about before where that's kind of starting to happen a little bit is that these bigger name actors are kind of getting involved with these smaller projects because they want to because they're good because they want to do something good yeah um i think it's really cool that the two main people in present day in this film were both in harry potter in present day yeah well because not in the flashback <laughs> In present day oh, in the right, film. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they were both in Harry Potter and I believe they were both in uh, the Deathly Hallows, Hallows part one. Yeah. One of the, yeah, the, the main guy I'm, in this Peter Mullen was a, was a death eater. Yeah. He was and, one of the um, death eaters. The woman was the mother to Hermione, I believe. Yeah. Mrs. Granger. So and that's well, pretty cool. The main, yeah. And so her, uh, they she's were both great. quote unquote, the main girl in this short film. She's mm -hmm. not in it for very long. Um, but she's probably most famously known for being Caitlin Stark in Game of Thrones. Oh, sure. If there's anybody out there that likes Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Just completely. She completely glosses oh, over uh, Game of Thrones for one look, of the Harry look, Potter movies. Look, <laughs> Harry Potter is awesome. And of course I think, it is. And I think it's super cool that they were both in that. And it's cool but that they were both in the same one. This is confirming my theory that every single British actor is in some way connected to one of the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. In some in some fashion. Somehow. A little small role or something. But, but yeah, yeah. Um the yeah, you're right. She was in Game of Thrones. It was um, or is in Game of Thrones. It was written know. by Ray Robinson and directed by Christian Cook. Um This was his uh first time directing, right? Um, I don't know. I believe I saw that. I looked on so there. So we'll just say uh, it the, is. <laughs> the, <laughs> the guy, so, okay. The guy who wrote it, um, he wrote a couple of other things. I believe that mm -hmm. they're also shorts. Um but as far as the directing and the cinematography for this was really awesome. Yeah. So it's really quiet, like Bethany said. Um, and there's a lot of um, like landscape kind of shots like, where... It's kind of interesting because it is really artsy, but not in the boring somebody from you know film school in a community college made it. <laughs> Some of, yeah, they, were, they knew what they were doing. Yeah, it's really <laughs> beautiful. And I think that that's because they use, I think they used actual landscapes from like the North Country. Oh, the North Country. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I read that somewhere too. Well, no, but yeah, like, that's you what know, they, they were talking about. They were saying it's that gorgeous. this location uh, was hard to film in because of the obvious weather that was probably terrible. You could kind of just yeah, tell. It was the, all snowy and cold the whole <laughs> and time. And it was like everything was but gray. That's part of it. But it was also um, very real. Yeah, because I think it was. I mean, I think, I think that's part of it. Is they actually used a beautiful landscape, um, which is something that you get. I think a lot with uh, smaller productions and with like independent films, is more realistic stuff because they don't have the money for like big sets, so they have to go and find a beautiful place to film, and that's kind of neat. 
and the 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 cinematography kind of actually since we were like talking about game of thrones um for a second there Uh uh-huh yeah for a half a second (laughs) it kind of reminds me of like an hbo show like a really well-produced hbo uh tv show and yeah we both mentioned that after it was over that we wanted to see like more of this place yeah of so the town that he lives in. We wanted to see more of this town and like more of the people in it and not necessarily follow this guy's story, but we want to see just the other people that live there. This like world, I guess. Yeah, play because out. basically it looks like this big open wide countryside, but with just a few people. Like the bar doesn't ha- is it doesn't look very full. It looks like there's just a few people there and this woman clearly knows him. Cause she says, you know, she says his name and she's like, Hey Jake, you know, yep. she talks to him, but also it's not like they were best friends. It's just, I, she seems to know him the way that you just know everybody in a small town. Right. When she comes over, it's like, she knows that this man's wife died and she sees him sitting alone and she's like, you know what? I'm going to go over there and try and cheer. And old, she starts dancing. Old grumpy Jake up, yeah. you know, she starts dancing at him. Um, yeah. So and I, I don't know that if this was a purposeful character thing, but the her rhythm, man, when she's <laughs> clapping. Awful. <laughs> you know what? It reminds me of me, though. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, I can dance in rhythm. I can't clap in rhythm. You can dance if you want to. Yeah. You can leave your friends okay, behind. Okay, we're done with that already. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, that was it was kind of a funny little quirk, though, I uh-huh. thought. But yeah, um, yeah, we were talking about that. So I personally wanted to know more about this woman. Sheila, I think, was her name. Yeah. Right. Um, because she just kind of, like I said, it seems like she just kind of knew this guy, Jake, because they live in a small town. It was just like, that's, you know, Jake and his wife died. Mm. Um, but she clearly just kind of wanted to help him out and try and, you know, make him feel a little better, do some dishes for him, whatever. Um, and I want to know more about her. Like I, I would like to see, you know, what's, what has gone on in her life and her past that makes her decide to be this kind of a generous, kind-hearted person. Right. But, I mean, it wouldn't necessarily have to be all the people connected to him. I mean, this movie basically has those two people. And then it has Jake from the past. Well, also what I thought was interesting is when he was in the bar and he was flashbacking in his own mind, Mm -hmm. is that the bar was, like, filled with people. Did you notice Um, that? It looked like... I was thinking it was later in the evening, though, because they had been drinking for a while. I did notice that. Oh, so those were real people yeah, that were I there so. presently yeah because that is really? one thing i forgot that we didn't mention but he does he, he does keep seeing his wife yeah but i know? don't think it's like actual hallucinations no i think that it's the way that you think of people like right you imagine them with you or you know there's one part where he kind of looks in the kitchen there's nobody in the kitchen but then he kind of hears her voice it's not like i don't i mean to me it's well, not like he was actually hearing her voice but it shows like up in there too in his yeah but in his mind he's he would like to imagine she's in the kitchen. Like, right. like I think a lot of people go through that when they're grieving is like, I feel like, you know, she's just at her house and I just am not with her right now. You know, well, that yeah, kind of so thought. that's the way that people that. cope with. I mean, a way that people actually go through denial <laughs> when they're grieving. But, um, I think that's the thing It's like he was remembering her and yeah, she was in his memory a lot. Yeah. And I think that the flashbacks made this, uh, more interesting than it would have been without it because i mean you could have an interesting short film without the flashbacks it'd probably be five minutes shorter and it would just be like sadness and this guy dealing with his <laughs> wife dying right sure um but the flashbacks add like you said kind of a little a bit l- of a mystery a little intrigue um and also makes this guy's character um and why he's so upset like have even more layers to it yeah um I think that it's interesting because, yeah, the story unfolds in the flashbacks. So when I was all worried about how are they going to do this in 15 minutes, it's interesting how they were able to take basically like three little moments from the past and it told you everything you needed to know about his present. You know, you're like, oh, I get it. I get where he where he's at, you know, mentally and what he's struggling with other than just, you know, a death, which is hard enough. Um, Yeah, it's super good. (laughs) It is really good. Like I said, I was pleasantly surprised by the whole by the whole thing, the we whole watched experience. it twice. We, uh, yeah. we I do it was think good. you should watch it twice if you're, you know, one later on once it is more widely Especially available. If you are American, yes, <laughs> no, okay, I was just gonna get to that because 
these people have accents, especially the main guy. He has like a Scottish accent, right? Well, and he's depressed and mumbling and yeah, drunk and sometimes. he's grumpy. <laughs> he's grumpy. He's depressed. He's mumbling, and he has an accent that's decently thick. And there are two lines in it that I'm still not sure what we tried to listen. <laughs> we like rewinded it. What did he say? I don't know, but it didn't ruin the film. No. We still got the concept, but um, it helps to watch it twice. But I also think because it is kind of this uh, little bit of a mystery, it was really cool to go back and watch it. Because honestly, the first time I watched it, I had to kind of talk it out with Charlie. Like, wait, so what just happened? Well, and these the <laughs> Charlie movies, got it a little more than me because he's better with accents. The, mo- the movies and short films that are like this, you know, that are have this sort of intrigue whatever story type thing they they should be hard to figure out yeah like that's kind of the point that i've been talking about for a long time like when we were doing our top five movies of 2016 yeah about how i was talking about over and over again about how movies just need to do things and let you figure them out because that makes you like the movie more that's just like That's just biology. Well, <laughs> when you figure something out, you feel better. It's true. Yeah, you feel good about yourself because yeah. you figured it out. Well, yeah, and I think that, you know, I have done a lot of poetry in my lifetime and a lot of poetry classes. Um, and that's something that one of my poetry teachers taught me in college was she kept saying, show, don't tell. Like Whose show? It, stop it. And what doesn't she tell? Um, no, she kept <laughs> saying that to me because, you know, when show I was, she was my first poetry teacher in college and she was the first person to really critique my poetry and I grew a lot because of it. But basically she was saying, she would also always say, don't assume your audience is stupid. You don't have to spell it out for them. Like they get what you're saying. Like I, I wanted to make sure like in case you didn't get what I'm saying here, <laughs> let me wrap it up with two cutesy little lines and she's like no don't leave it and let them think on it and they'll get to it and if by chance they get to a different conclusion than you that's kind of part of it that's part of the fact that it's art you can you're going to relate to something differently than you know somebody else might that's one of the reasons why you know you'd like this more than you know some bad you know mystery kind of show on abc or whatever because you're figuring it out you're not being told what's happening yeah and that's also why you want to see more of it yeah it's like so like you feel you feel like it's really awesome and it was really good but you also feel kind of sad because you wanted to continue yeah because it's only 15 minutes you're like wait i could go on also with this character in particular i'm like i would like to see what happens next Mm. but i think that it's also great the way they leave it off because it makes you it gives you the opportunity to imagine what happens next you know yeah Uh, but i mean yeah it would be awesome if they could do a bunch of short films a series yeah i'd love that i'd be up for that yeah (laughs) mini production i'd be up for that (laughs) um but no i mean i think it's wonderful it's like they were waiting for your go ahead yeah (laughs) don't worry guys i'm up for it oh bethany says green Um, light get to work a bunch of other amazing actors and make this thing um but no i mean it was yeah it was really good the acting made it it's like you said the cinematography was beautiful Uh the directing was good the storytelling was good and the acting was good like because i was thinking like when we first got done watching it i was thinking oh the actors really made it like they really made it special but then the more i think about it like it's really genius the way that they go back you know and tell the story through memories It's really smart and well-written. And I think any movie that has this little dialogue Mm. has to be smart and well-written. It's not easy to do. Um, Oh, I had some movies that it reminded me of. Yeah. So just, I mean, not necessarily reminded me of these movies, like their stories, but the way it was was filmed filmed and and the way that it was quiet. So um, Charlie mentioned Fargo. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, And then I mentioned No Country for Old Men and True Grit, both of which are or all three of which are Coen brother movies. And at the time that you mentioned that you didn't know they were all, I had no idea. Charlie pointed it out, which I thought was interesting, (laughs) but I think that's really interesting because I mean, I mean, a lot of people love the Coen brothers, right? They're great. And the way that they shoot, I mean, that's part of what makes them great is the way that they film, you know, they have really interesting shots and they, you know, they're sparing with their dialogue. Right. It's purposeful. And I think that that's, um, the fact that I thought of three Coen brother movies just is a testament to how interesting this was. Well, and also Fargo uh, takes place in Minnesota. Yeah, expansive cold land. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so it's really cold Similar feel. and like white, like bright white, but also somehow depressing. a lot of snow, but a lot of gray. And um, and it also it's like kind of like Fargo, 
But if, you know, well, first of all, you get rid of the humor <laughs> and you take out the humor. Not that there wasn't any like little comedic relief, but yeah, it, there's you some, know, the girl is dancing minutes, and stuff like that. You know, um, we don't have a lot of time. You for also <laughs> bring the stakes way down. You know, this is just yeah. one guy and his own life and his own yeah, problem very, that he's dealing with. It's a very personal story, um, which is cool. Like, that's why I think that's part of also what makes us want to see more is because um, it's very seldom you get a story where you don't know about anybody else. Like, we learned nothing about Sheila. Not very little about right. Sheila. We basically, I think they really only said, like, two names the whole time. Edith and Jake. He might have said Sheila once. But... Really, it was all about Jake. The whole thing. Yeah. It was all in his own mind. Really, all these things that and were happening it wasn't around even him about weren't what was important. It's what he was thinking about. His whole was life. Important. It was just about this one kind of moment in his life. Th- this one compared defining to moment. To this other defining moment in yeah. his life. Oh man, it's cool. I like the end. I mean, I'm not gonna say it. we don't want to spoil it because it is really good. Right. Um. Yeah, it's a great. I don't want to. It's not a twist, but it's a great kind of reveal of what he's thinking. Well, the you whole movie. like I said, it's unfolding, so you're getting to the point. You're like, oh, okay, I think I know where this is going, but it's it feels good when you finally get there. You're like, okay, like it all makes sense now. Do you want to do a little rating? Sure, you can do a little rating. All right. Rotten Tomatoes percentages. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes percentages. I don't know if Rotten Tomatoes does short films. I don't know either. But if if it were to be on Rotten Tomatoes compared to the other few short films that I've seen, I think the uh, only other ones I've seen are like Pixar ones. Yep. Um, I think I've seen some random ones that we watched in my digital filmmaking class in college. And I've seen the one that uh, District 9 is based off of. I've not seen that one. Which is pretty good. Um, But if on Rotten Tomatoes, I would say anywhere between 82 and 85%. From critics? From critics. Yeah, and it's really, really hard to know what audience would think. Right. And I mean, it's basically my percentage because, I mean, you know, I I don't think that it's going to get rated and... Um, just because I don't think they do short films. Well, yeah, but obviously like critics will see it and talk about it. I would assume. And you know, the festival circuit, there will be people who are reviewing things. Um, and I think that the critics who do talk about it will like it. Yeah. And I'm going to say 85 just because, um, I mean like that's a really good movie in my eyes. Oh yeah. And as far as short films go, you know, they only have so much time to tell a story and to show off their, what they got. And I think that if it were to have more parts to it, that the rating would go up a little bit every time. If we could have, if it was, if it was a mini series, because that's all it is. It's just like, it does. I think it does exactly what it wants to do in leaving you wanting more. But that doesn't mean that, you know, don't feel bad about wanting more. Well, yeah, because then you're like, oh, that was so great. Makes me want more. And then you're like, wait, are you guys going to be presenting me with more? Because especially in this day and age, because we have, you know, so oh, many yeah. miniseries. Everything is- Everything's a miniseries now with all these different streaming services and HBO. Most of the time, if you like, like, let's say a pilot, if you like the pilot and other people like the pilot, don't worry about it. They're going to make more, you know, because it's all about money. Well, and also, Whereas this is not this. I mean, I'm sure that this is about money, too. I'm sure that this is mostly about art and making. They talk about on their website, many productions about how they care about storytelling. Every movie. Basically, every movie is, you know, if it makes any money at all, is set up to make more movies. Yeah, a lot of like, them nowadays. Pretty yeah. much. That's exactly what happens with the exception of a, of a few um i mean and even those could you like could spin them off somewhere else um so we're used to we're in a culture right now especially when it comes to uh content and consuming content we just consume and consume and consume (laughs) and i'm talking about charlie and i specifically we're like gotta finish this and then you finish it and then you have the same way with pizza that hole like wasn't there a funny uh commercial about like the netflix hole or whatever like your finish your show hole you finish the show and then you're in a hole like what do i do now (laughs) and then you quickly go and find another show Uh and you fill that space well um you know, you're going to be in a hole after this and we can't guarantee you there will ever be anything else, (laughs) you know, but I think that the great thing is 
whether or not there is ever going to be any type of follow up to this, which would be really cool if there was. But even if there never is, this company, Mini Productions, does other short films. And I think they also do plays and different things. So if you really like this, then you can keep an eye out for what else they're doing. Yeah. And also, I mean, if you are going to any festivals of any kind, keep an, keep eye, an out. eye out for it. Because yeah. it's really good. If it's on the schedule, go see yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. going to do a few plugs. All right. Um, first, you can find us, the movie trailer, nope, mttpodcast.com. Wow. That's mttpodcast.com. There we go. <laughs> you can follow us uh, at mttpodcast. You can go to our Patreon page. Uh, yes. Just go to Patreon, search movie trailer trash. Um, it's movie. It's patreon.com slash mttpodcast if you really want to do it that way. I don't think I've ever searched for anything like that before yeah, in my life. just type us in in the search bar on Patreon. <laughs> Um. Oh, well, you already said Twitter. Yeah. Um. Oh, and keep an eye out for more special episodes like this. This was a really awesome opportunity for mm-hmm. us, and we enjoyed it. And we might be doing some more uh, short films in the future with mini productions. Uh, on our well, podcast, not, like not with them, them, but like talking <laughs> about them. Um. And we don't know how to do that. And you know, also, if you liked this special episode. Really check us out on Patreon because anytime we do something special, you know, going forward, we're going to start really putting things on Patreon for our patrons so that they can enjoy extra special things. If you really like the special episode, let us know on iTunes by rating and reviewing and uh, giving us a little boop boop five star. Beep, beep, beep. Just give us a little five star. (laughs) It's a simple click of the mouse. Yeah, well, five clicks. No, I don't think you have what? to do that. <laughs> oh man, Charlie's never rated anything before. Um, you gotta, you have to tap it one, two, three, four, five. No, but um, yeah, boop, rate boop, us boop. and review us. That would be really helpful. And you know, if you like our show in general, share us with your friends because we're just doing this because we love movies. We because love talking we about them, to. and we are excited to share our views with the world. And I think. You know, the more listeners, the better. And as always, go to uh, subscribe to Entertainment Buffet's YouTube channel. Follow them on Twitter at Entertain Buffet. That's all for now. Hope you enjoyed the special (laughs) episode, folks. It was special. Uh (laughs) (laughs) See you later.